you haven't tried it, do it. You will find that something goes along with prayer. You say, no, I'm getting ready to give God some praise. I'm getting ready to give God some glory. You know, I see that you will come at this time to take us all in this praise service. We see what never harm to praise the Lord.
immersion into the praise of our awesome and mighty God. At this time, just in case there's someone in the house that's not feeling uh, the hand of welcome has not been extended to the way that it, you might like to, it to be extended. We have the first lady here. Glory to God. And then the baby, blessed, she's going to give you a personal welcome. That all right? Receive her heart, praise the Lord. And she will in turn be followed by first lady, Sister Johnson. I do we appreciate Johnson, the evangelist Johnson, pastor. Whatever you, whatever your role is, I want you to quit that, quit that. All right, all right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the good Lord. Are you happy? Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm happy to see your smiling face. I'm happy that God brought you here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Friends, some old, some new, but you're friends. Yeah. But after you become friends for a while. God turned me into family. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, we family. Yes. Look at you on the other side and say, it's a family of faith. Yes. And we know how to worship the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah, because we are connected. Yes. I, I just want to, I want to thank the Lord for Bishop Johnson and, and his lady. I want you to stand up because I'm going to pass it right on over to you. Because I think about, I said, we haven't known each other that long. But the first time I went to Greater Bethel, well, it wasn't the first time going to Greater Bethel, but she was there. But she was waiting in the hallway. She didn't know who I was, and I didn't know who she was, but the Spirit knew. The Spirit knows. So family say the Spirit knows. Hallelujah. And so when we got together, and she gave me a hug. Come on.
my pastor. Yeah. My husband. Yeah. Can't get no better than that, like I said today. <laughs>
Brother Cedric here? Did he make it? Brother Cedric testified how he gave five hundred dollars and the Lord blessed him. He put five dollars, five dollars. He had ten dollars and he gave the Lord half of that. And then he uh, was walking around outside somewhere and he looked down and said he was a hundred dollar bill. I wanted to yell out, that was mine. I was nowhere around. <laughs> I want to say that's, I, I try to claim everything. Every time my wife finds something, I say, didn't I drop that? You know, and, and of course, uh, another blessing here, uh, he made me nervous because he started calling her uh, um, evangelist, preacher, and I, I said, Lord, man, you have an agreement, only one preacher in the family, so, uh, but, but don't, don't get no ideas, honey. Is. Praise the Lord. So we're going to represent with 500 and we're going to ask Spirit of Bethel whatever you can give uh, to help this great church. Uh, it's always a blessing when you help the pastor. Uh, when you help the pastor and first lady, you help the church. Amen. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. As you all know, we go through so much. The church blessed me today with uh, uh, all those birthday cards. I was in the office reading them. Uh, such beautiful cards. Uh, just, I tell you, it was uh, um, just wonderful and touching. And then Brother Kirby came knocking on the door, interrupted my moment. <laughs> Put a lock on that door, but I <laughs> really, really enjoyed that. I'll be, I'll be 55, June 5th. All those times. I was talking to my brother and. And uh, he said, what's your birthday again? I said, 6564. He was writing down, 6564. I said, yeah. I said, you know, mama's hers was 122633. He said, 1226. I know what he's writing. Down? I said, you know, Floyd's was uh, 812. He said, oh, those some good numbers. I said, hold on. <laughs> so I said, you hit, I want my cut for the church. He ain't called me, so it's good to see Lady Shannon in our midst. God bless you, Lady Shannon. It's good to see her on the day. All right, so we're going to bless the offering right now. We're going to bless it before we uh, take it up uh, and let the Lord multiply. Can we say amen? amen? Amen. This is a beautiful church, beautiful place. Amen. Beautiful people. God bless you. Let's bow our heads tomorrow in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for a safe passage over the dangerous highways, Lord, and brought all of us here safely. And, oh God, we are happy and rejoicing uh, in the spirit of fellowship and love that we feel in this holy temple, the Lord's temple. Oh God, we pray right now that you will bless this offering. You know we have a goal in mind. We pray, Lord, that you move upon the hearts of your people. We cannot beat you giving, no matter how hard we may try, but we thank you right now in advance for multiplying this offering. Let it be used for your glory and for your praise. Bless your people in their giving. You give to us, we give back to you, Lord. Bless everyone with a financial blessing. Oh God, remind them it's because of the sacrifice that they gave in this offering. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands, say amen. 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 The honorable Pastor Bell. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Pastor Bell, right? so beautiful there. God bless you, Pastor Mel. All right, you're in the hands of, of these deacons. Brothers. He ain't claiming that, is he? Brothers. God bless you. <laughs> All right, good brothers. Can you say amen? Good job, too. Wow, that tie. Oh, that tie matched the shirt. The shirt might be too big for me. I don't know. But... All right. <laughs> all right, let's all stand as we, as we give. Uh, we are streaming, courtesy of my daughter. We're streaming on Facebook Live. I'm going to give my daughter a hand. She's doing a fantastic job. And, uh, so that those back home can watch the service. So uh, when you shout, don't kick the camera. Can we say amen? Amen. Don't kick the devil, but don't kick the camera. Hallelujah. All right, let's all come. Starting from the rear. God bless you. And uh, back to the hands of the Honorable. I would have listened. God bless you. Turn to you. I have one question. Oh. What do the people do that's got brought friends or guests or whatever? What do they do with the envelope? They got it broke down on the envelope. Okay. Right. Sure they want to face it out.
calm you down. You feel like you're still loaded down. You, you can calm that down. Amen. God is a good guy. Give yourself a hand. Give yourself a hand. All right, this time we're going to move along. We're going to bring the one that is pastor in here, our natural brother, as well as our district elder slash chairman of the council, one that God has elevated to the position. It's one thing when you let God do it versus you doing it. When God do it, it's a done deal. But when you do it, somebody can pull the rug. But we thank God. At this time, receive if you would. We ask that you will stand. If you're able to stand, we won't ask that you will stand. If the president, I mean, some of them may like it, some of them may not, I don't know, but he's the president, so if he will come into the room, most of us will stand in, in honor of the office that is holds. So in, in honor of this office that this one holds, we stand in for that very reason, not because he's a man, but he because he's a God man. Let's receive him with a hearty praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Johnny Blessing. Lord, we certainly um, give God praise. Anything that's done, and we know it's God, we need to recognize it. And let us talk more about Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to sound let us sing, sing, sing about Jesus. I'm going to sing. I'm kind of partial to that because people like to do a lot of talking. Yeah, well. I'm to the conclusion, if you're not talking about Jesus, you're probably talking about nothing too much important. Amen. 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 So let us talk more about Jesus than about anything else. Amen. If you want your, your conversation to be relevant. Amen. This evening we are highly favored for great people of the Great God who came all the way from Louisville. Lewisville, how we wait for them to say that. There's several pronunciations of it, but I say Louisville. <laughs> Amen. Came all the way down just to be with people in the country. Yeah. We may be in Bowling Green, but we're not green. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, we know how to act in the church. That's the main thing. And we appreciate the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. It still works. Yes. I say still works. Yes. I believe that God's people are all to be the best people that's in the world. We are the salt of the earth. Wherever we are, we are like some change in the atmosphere. This evening, we are greatly blessed. Of the Lord, mm -hmm. we allowed a great man of a great God to come to be with us in Bowling Green, Kentucky. By the name, we're going to introduce to some and present to others one distinguished man of God. By the name of, if you will, we're going to give this man we stand with as we announce his name. That amen. Amen. Recognize him of his office and who he is. Amen. amen. All the way from Louisville, Kentucky, Greater Bethel Temple Apostolic Church, Suffolk and Bishop Raider Johnson. They've got a praise for him in the house. And he's in the house. In the house. Let me see you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, this time we're going to ask that the choir will come uh, to the uh, podium or to the pulpit to minister us this song. I'm very grateful for the choir and all the saints. Lady, hey man, we got right out of service and they loaded right up on the bus all right. uh, to drive down. So we appreciate all of the accommodations that our Lord's Temple have made. And, uh, we thank the Lord for all their sacrifices. They could have just went back home. You know, it's hard to get folk to come out to church twice on Sunday. Is that right? Hey man, you must really have to love God in order to come back out. Uh, 
and people just don't love God like they like they used to. Uh, they work overtime, double time, triple time. Amen for that for that dollar. But uh, these people they love the Lord. Amen. 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 Because He's heard their cry. And so they they sang at the Apostolic World Christian Fellowship on uh, Tuesday night. They sang at uh, Bishop Trumbo's. Uh, 33rd pastoral anniversary this past Friday. Uh, they sang this morning uh, three songs. I think they sang a couple songs each each uh, each night, and then they're back here uh, with us. Not all of them, those that could come, uh, but we thank the Lord for their sacrifice, and also the Great Brother Temple Saints that are here uh, with us and our ministers. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, the deaconess is here. Do we have any other deaconesses here? She's the, she's the lone one that made it. Uh, I think she's been in all the services. Uh, the choir is saying. And, and of course we have Mother Julia Williams. Where is she at? Where Mother Williams go? There she is. My daughter was telling me that on the way down she was asking one of the saints, you going to Bowling Green? And he said, oh, no. She said, you might as well go. You ain't going to do nothing but go home. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mother Julia is here with us, and Sister Perry is with us. Amen. 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 Sister Smith is with us. Amen. Sister Peggy Longs, Dr. Singleton, Evangelist Baudre. She's been sick today, but the Lord touched her, Amen. and she's here right now. Our social pastor's here. Uh, our trustee Radford, his wife is here. Praise the Lord. Uh, the Mars are here. Praise the Lord. The tumors are here. Amen. Sister Alexia is here. She just got saved a few weeks ago. She's here. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to remember everybody's name. Did I mention Kirby? Yeah. him off, huh? He was here. So we're just happy for everyone uh, that said, who did I miss? Sister Spencer, Sister Spencer. Oh, yes. Sister Spencer. Yes. Uh, my two goddaughters are here. Hey, Amen. They ain't paying me no attention right now, but if I pull out a dollar, I have their whole attention. <laughs> Beautiful little girls there. God bless you. So, and then, of course, we'll have our ministers stand and give uh, a scripture uh, but just before we preach. So at this time, let's receive the Greater Bethel Temple Choir. We appreciate all the musicians that are doing a fantastic job. And uh, Brother Myron and on the organ, and Brother Tumor. Brother Tumor is the one hand drummer. <laughs> but the Lord has blessed him. He cut his hand real bad back in January. And the doctor told him that you wouldn't have how much usage in the hand? He said you wouldn't have, you would have or you wouldn't have. Up to 80 percent, but he's been banging on those drums like uh, yeah. like like nobody's business. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, the chief musician, the maestro, uh, Dr. Lysandro Linton, is leading the choir. So, this time, let's proceed then with A and B selection. Let's proceed by saying, "Praise the Lord." Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. But it's between you and God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 H
be in. God bless you. Come on, give the Lord another hand. For that. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, we've all had a long day. Can we say amen? Amen. And of course, we come to the most important part, and that's the word of the Lord. Amen. Again, I want to thank everyone for coming out. Amen. I see the Longs out there. God bless you, brothers and sisters Long. Amen. Amen. Faithful members, we thank God for you. Amen. At this time, I want to ask if our ministers would stand and give uh, their favorite scripture or scripture. Praise the Lord, all of our ministers. Amen. Can we say amen? Amen. Ministers, God bless you. Amen. We'll start from the pulpit and then work ourselves on around. God bless you, Elder Briscoe. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May help us in the Minister Perry, God bless you. Matthew, 
uh, we're not going to hold you long. You just uh, give me about two and a half hours and she'll be done. <laughs> I can't preach that long anymore. Man, I'm short winded. I can't preach that long anymore. I can't even preach that long practicing. I used to be able to preach practicing for a long time. Praise the Lord. But nonetheless, we want to give you what thus saith the Lord. And then we want to let you go home and watch the rafters beat the warriors. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I say that because usually the opposite of what I say is true. So, <laughs> All right. Let's all stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. If you can, stand. Uh, we're so honored. We're so honored to be here. Thank you, uh, to Shkara Blessed, Lady Blessed, for inviting us uh, to be um, your guests for this wonderful Family Friends Day. Uh, Matthew chapter 24. And um, I want to say a lot of reading. So we'll just read um, three verses. Verse 12, 13, and 14. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Turn to your neighbor and say, we will win, we will win. in the end. I have I have never won anything in my life. Um, whether it's a contest or at a carnival or anything. I've had two lottery tickets placed on my car and they weren't even winners. <laughs> had to wrestle my wife from this guy that was trying to talk to her. He was tall, dark, and handsome, and, and uh, he asked me to go get her phone number. Now, uh, I still had a little bit of the world in me because you don't go to a woman to get a number for her, for somebody else. So I knew my rap game wasn't completely gone. Because <laughs> I got the number and slipped out the back door. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I was, wife was testifying one time. She wasn't my wife at the time. She was my girlfriend slash fiance and she was testifying in the testimony service. Remember when we used to have testimony service? We Yes. And she got up talking about how she met a man, and I sat up in my chair and said, yeah, now, that's what I'm talking about. I met a man, and he's just so wonderful. And, and I fixed my tie up and feeling real good, and I never thought I could find a man like this man. And, and I think I went like crazy just a little bit, but you know, but, and uh, she said his name was Jesus. And I was like, oh. I said, yeah. And one of the brothers looked at me and said, ain't he all right? I was like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I, I, I ain't never really won anything. I remember when the kids, my wife took the kids to the carnival, they was coming back with cakes and pies and all the other stuff that they won. Um, but if I'm gonna win anything, I'm gonna win eternal life. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not gonna be lost. I'm not going to be lost, and you know, it seems like that um, the longer time goes, the worse things are. Um, our youngest boy took a vacation down in the Dominican Republic, and he went down there by himself, and and uh, having to send back pictures, and having a good time, and then uh, while he was down there, there was a couple found dead at a resort down there, right near where he was, and. And then I got another, read another article where a woman was beaten up yeah. at the resort. 
She was missing all night long. Her husband couldn't find her. The resort security wasn't helping them. The police weren't helping them, you know, because the government is all corrupt. And they finally found her the next day. And, and uh, she testified that she was beaten by uh, one of the workers because they had on a resort uh, uniform. And right. The resort is denying everything. The police is not helping or anything like that. Uh, then there was a couple that uh, in the Dominican that uh, were heading to the airport and they just seemingly disappeared and they found them dead. And they found another couple dead in the resort room. You know, it's just, just some dangerous times that are going on. And uh, Minister Griffin was quoting that 23rd Psalm, Yea, though I walk through the valley, a shadow of death, I was thinking, Yea, though I walk through the city of Louisville, this morning, I will fear no evil. Can you say amen? It's just bad all over, bad all over the place. And there are not a lot of very happy people. People, for the most part, are not happy. You just go to the store sometime and look at the faces of the people that you see in the store or at the mall or what have you. They just have a distressed look upon their face because people are going through some hard times. There are some hardships up there. I was talking to a man who said his wife just uh, uh, committed adultery on him and just mistreated him and they were all in the church and he said he never thought at the age that he was uh, at the age that he's at that he would be going through a divorce after being married for almost 20 years. People are having difficult times. The devil is really trying to make it difficult on everybody. And it seems like that uh, uh, there seems to be more people strung out on on uh, medication, having mental problems and mental issues, and and the pharmaceuticals is uh, is up to they're making billions and billions of dollars uh, just on medicine because the first thing the doctor wants to do when you go see him is medication. Praise the Lord. And some of that medication, like our dear sister Faith was testifying, how she went to the doctor having pain in her leg and the doctor prescribing her some medication, making her all kind of woozy. And, and I was thinking that's why she was looking like that the other day. I was saying, Lord, <laughs> she's just going through. Praise the Lord. And, that, and that's what that medication will do to you. You know, it, it makes you uh, make, makes you lethargic and drowsy and you're just you're just not yourself. People are hurting out there. The devil is doing all that he can to try to blow people's minds. Amen. Whether it's problems in your own life or problems in someone's life that you know, somebody that's close to you. And I learned that if the devil can't get to you, he'll try to get to somebody that's close to you. That's how he got at it. Can you say amen? Amen to Eve. So, amen. The devil is always thinking about us. And amen. And the old saying that he used to say, well, the devil is busy. Well, I got news for you. God is busy too. But at the same time, the devil is doing his dirt. God is blessing somebody. And he is working behind the scenes. And he is uh, taking care of his own. And that's the comfort that we should have. That no matter how bad it gets out in the world, the Lord will take care of us. And I remember my father used to uh, physically abuse my mother and physically abuse my, my sisters. And he was verbally abusive, abusive to me. And, and yet still I remember as a little boy, my mother used to take us to church. And, and one of her favorite songs she used to sing that, that used to touch me at six years old, uh, that God will take care of you. Yes. I couldn't figure that out. That yes. didn't seem like he was taking care of her, but it was something in her heart that caused her to hold out and to hold on in spite of all of the atrocities that was happening at home. She still held on. And I like to think that I'm still here because my mother taught me that you can have, amen, faith in God, that you can make it in spite of any kind of adversity. No matter what the devil throws at you, you can make it if you want to make it. Hallelujah. See, I preached a sermon at Greta Bethel uh, some months ago uh, where David said, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from when cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, amen, which made the heavens and the earth. And that's the thing that keeps us stable. That's the thing that keeps us sane, that in spite of the difficulty and the troubles and the hardships and the catastrophes that we may face, praise God, we know where our help comes from in the end. And we don't have to go out and blow our brains out or, or get strung out on drugs or lose our humanity or lose our womanhood, amen, claiming to be something that we're not. Our help comes from God. God knows how to come in and help us. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. 
Some of you know all just like myself have lost children at a young age and it's not normal for parents to have to bury their own children. But I've learned that God can keep you in the midst of even that situation. Praise the Lord, because it's easy for folk to give up on God when they're going through some hard times. And praise the Lord, looking at somebody else that seemingly is riding on a flowery bed of ease and seem like that they're not going anything and going through anything. And then we look at ourselves and even have a little pity party, even within our own selves, because we are looking at what somebody else seemingly successful, but you don't know what folk are going through. That is your shot, hallelujah. You don't know what people are dealing with in the midnight hour when they're lying there all alone. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I thank God that my help comes from the Lord at all times. That's why I will bless him at all times. Amen. Because I know what he means to me. I know what he has done for me. But I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that as we get closer and closer to the end, Praise the Lord. Things are going to get progressively worse. Amen. Because the devil is doing all that he can to try to burn this world up. Amen. But I'm here to tell you that you will win if you endure. All of the suffering and all the trial. If you just hold on in there and keep on keeping on and keep on walking with God. Amen. When the time comes, when it ends, Jesus said, if you suffer with me, you shall reign with me. Oh, come on. Clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Well, Jesus here in this 24th chapter is dealing with what we call eschatology. Eschatology is a theological term that deals with the study of the end times. And some of the things that he is talking about here are the, some of the things that we are experiencing right now, that we are seeing on television right now. You see, this was just two days before he was to be taken and crucified. This was on a Wednesday, and of course, they had, uh, uh, were there at the temple and the disciples were showing him uh, the beautiful construction of Herod's temple that uh, took 46 years to build and it was a very impressive complex there that, amen, praise God, that they had taken 46 years to construct this unbelievable process, uh, co uh, complex there, excuse me. And so the disciples were enamored, they were impressed with all of the beautiful stone and the structure and how it was completely laid out. And Jesus looked at them and said, you see these stones? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. In other words, he prophesied that this building that you all are so enamored with and so impressed with one day is going to be so destroyed that when it is finally destroyed, there will not be one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And of course, he was prophesying about the destruction of Jerusalem, amen, in 70 AD, some 37 years later, when Titus and the Roman army would invade Jerusalem and destroy Jerusalem and burn down the temple and take that temple apart brick by brick and slaughter over one million Jews. And history tells us that the slaughter was so great that Amen. That the soldiers got sick of the blood and they just turned their backs and let some of those Jews just escape because they just were sickened with the sight of blood. And Titus and the Roman army marched in that Jerusalem and destroyed, completely obliterated that city. And the only thing that they left standing was a wall, a portion, a portion of a wall around Jerusalem, which is what they call today the Wailing Wall. Can the church say amen? amen? Which the Jews go there and weep and wail, even on their feast days, because they cannot worship God according to the law, even as the law has prescribed for them to do. And so the disciples were completely shocked about this. This was something that they never thought uh, could even happen. They never had seen it coming. And so it rose the curiosity of the disciples. And the Bible says that they went to Jesus privately and said, tell us when shall these things be? When is this going to happen? Praise God that this com temple complex is going to be completely destroyed to where one stone shall not be left on top of another that shall not be thrown down. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And so Jesus then takes the 24th chapter and the 25th chapter to answer the questions that they had concerning the signs of the end times. And I want you to know that everything that he talked about in this 24th chapter is happening before our eyes right now. Can the church shout hallelujah? And I want to read to you just a few of the things here, even praise the Lord, before we close. And he said, 
uh, Jesus, the Bible says Jesus answered them in verse 4 and said, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I want you to notice that he didn't say that many shall come in my name and say that I am Jesus Christ. He uses the term, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And I want you to know that the word title Christ in uh, the Greek means the anointed. And so he says that there will be false Christ or false anointings. Can the church shout hallelujah? And I'm quite sure that you all are familiar and know about these things because there's all kinds of false anointings that are going on. Amen. Among God's people. Preachers that are claiming that they're anointed. Anointed. Amen. To heal you. Anointed. To demand a command of blessing to come upon you. Amen. But it's just simply a false anointing. Amen. Everybody that is shouting in the church claiming, amen, to have the anointing is not the real anointing. It's a false Christ. It's a false anointing. Sometimes I'm in church services here and there and even I look up and see people shouting. I see a lot of times, uh, not every time, but a lot of times some of the worst saints that you could ever look at even are the ones that seemingly want to shout. Even the Lord have mercy. I'm in Louisville for a minute. I had a flashback there for a moment. Can the church say hallelujah? Seems like they gotta always come down to the front. Amen. Those those that got a little sugar in them, you know what I'm talking about. They always gotta be down in the front and they seem to be the best dancers. And a lot of times I look at that and I said, you know what? That's got to be a false anointing. Because of the anointing, the true anointing will not allow you, amen, to be gay or not allow you to be a lesbian. Oh, I wish I was in the right church. False anointings. Huh? Sometimes I think that even in our church services, we think that a lot of times that the fire of God is going on. But I think a lot of times it's just a bunch of strange fire. Oh, y'all ain't hear me on today. That's the day that we're living in. What does I? What do I have to shout about if I can't live for Jesus? Amen. What am I shouting about if I can't stop cussing? If I can't stop sleeping around? What am I shouting about if I can't stop gambling? Can't stop lying? Amen. If I'm shouting, it's because it's not a true anointing. It's the false anointing. Because a true anointing will cause you to fall out on your knees and ask God to forgive you. Why well, was in the right church today? Hallelujah. You see, when the true anointing comes, uh, if there's something wrong in your life, it brings you to a state of conviction. It brings you to a state of uh, to, to repentance. Can the church shout hallelujah? Amen. When the real anointing comes, uh, amen, it causes you to look at yourself, amen, as God sees you. Amen. Don't you remember when Isaiah, the sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah, when he recorded that in the year that King Uzziah died, can the church shout hallelujah? He said, I saw also the Lord. Praise God, sitting upon a throne. He was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Can the church shout hallelujah? Even in the seraphims that flew by, amen, cried, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, the Lord of hosts. Can the church shout hallelujah? Where the prophet saying the whole temple was filled with smoke, filled with the presence of God. But you don't read about him standing there shouting. You don't read about him dancing. Amen. And keep them, don't get it wrong. I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to dancing and shouting. You just have to know what you're shouting about. You just have to have a reason to shout. Can the church shout hallelujah? Amen. Praise the Lord. And when Isaiah saw the Lord and felt the presence of God, amen, your Bible said, he said, woe is me. Amen. For I am a man that dwells in the midst of an unclean people. For mine eyes have seen the King, even the Lord of hosts. When the presence of God comes into the room, if you ain't right, you gotta get right. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah. False Christ in the church. False preachers preaching, claiming that God is showing them this and God is telling them that. Nothing but a false anointed. Uh, I'm tired of hearing preachers telling me, uh, amen, that your check is in the mail. Uh, amen, if you give this and give that, if you sow a seed here, if you give this money, uh, your check is in the mail. Uh, I told one preacher, I don't get a check in the mail. Uh, my check is direct deposit. Uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, I don't have to do something. I don't have to try to bribe God into doing something for me. Uh, God loves me enough. He'll do for me in spite of what I do for him. Because he realizes that I'm not worthy. Amen. 
and how many of y'all hear me today? I'm not trying to say, uh, amen, that there's not a standard we need to live up to. Uh, amen, but you can't bribe God into giving you anything. Uh, amen, you can't buy God with money. Uh, you can't buy God by impressing him. Uh, amen, we're living in a day of what Jesus talked about. Uh, amen, he said, uh, these people honor me with their mouth uh, and with their lips. Uh, do honor me. Can the church shout hallelujah? Uh, but their heart is far from me. Uh, I want y'all hearing me tonight. Uh, I don't want God to look at me like that. Uh, I want to love him because he's God. Uh, I want to worship him because, uh, amen, he first loved me. Uh, I want to serve him because uh, of what he's done for me. Uh, how he brought me out. Uh, I don't want to try to buy him. Uh, I want to love him. Because uh, I know he loves me. Uh, come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say hallelujah. Jesus said, look out, apostles. In the last days, there's going to be some false Christ. And then he said, false preachers. Amen. They shall come in my name. In the church, shout hallelujah. And then he said, you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. Amen. As you look on television all the time, seems like that our president is trying to get a war going no matter where he goes. Sorry if y'all are repentant. Republicans, uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, amen. Everywhere he goes, he is incited. Uh, amen. Anger and hostility. Uh, amen. Because he's of the devil himself. Uh, I wonder kind of witnesses in here. Uh, amen. And I did my research and I found uh, that there are at least 40 wars uh, that are going on around this country. Uh, or 40 wars going on in our world. Uh, and even in our cities. Uh, praise God, there are civil wars uh, going on on in our cities uh, and I don't want you to I want you to realize uh, if you haven't noticed it that there is a war uh, on Christianity uh, in the church of hallelujah uh, and they're not satisfied uh, with taking prayer out of schools uh, they're not satisfied uh, amen with us not uh, praying in schools uh, but now they want us to recognize uh, some of the most perverted folk uh, amen called homosexuals and lesbians uh, I know it's on Facebook, that's why I'm saying it. Huh? And the church said, hallelujah. Huh? Want us to recognize, huh? amen, the transgenderism. Huh? Amen, want to wake up one day and you say you're a girl. Huh? Wake up the next morning and then you're a boy. Huh? And the church said, hallelujah. Huh? It is nothing but the trick of the devil. Huh? For you to look in a mirror with your long beard huh? and talk about you a woman. Huh? I wonder y'all hearing me. Huh? Amen, but it's long. Huh? Amen. As I'm saved, I will never accept the LGBT community. Amen. Can the church say hallelujah? I'm not saying that we hate them. We just hate the sin. I'm not saying that we hate them. Amen. We just hate what they stand for. And God hates homosexuality so well that he burnt up a whole country by the name of Sodom and Gomorrah. And if God hated it then, I guarantee you, he hates it right now. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Say hallelujah. I'm almost finished. Oh, yes, they're trying to get us to accept it. And they're trying to pass laws. Even to make it to a toe. Even that every church has got to accept transgender people. They're trying to pass laws. Even to even make it a law that uh, if you are a minister and you were not married to gay folk, uh, and it is a felony uh, already in the country of Canada, uh, even to preach against homosexuality uh, is a 20 year felony. Uh, and we've had some apostolic preachers uh, that have gone to prison uh, up there in Canada uh, because they stood uh, against this foul, uh, even version of fornication uh, in the church. Uh, Hallelujah. Amen. You see, saints, we are being tested today. If you mean business and walking with God, you are going to be tested. Amen. If you mean business about going to heaven to be with Jesus, you are going to be tested to your core. Amen. The devil is going to challenge you. All those testimonies that you testify, I put it all in his hand. He's going to come and try you. I wonder y'all hear me. All y'all that testify. For God I live. And for God I'll die. Oh yeah, there's something coming. That's going to challenge you. But let me encourage you tonight. You will win. And you will do it to the end. Come on, clap your hands and shout glory. Say glory. Come on and shout hallelujah. Said nation shall rise against nation.
nation and kingdom against kingdom. He said there'll be pestilence in diverse places, earthquakes in diverse places. And I can imagine the apostles being shocked beyond measure because they never heard anything like this that's coming. And then I heard Jesus say in verse number eight, all these things are just the beginning of sorrows in the church of hallelujah. Look at how bad it is out there. Deficit in the trillions. Poverty all over the land. Greed and corruption in the highest forms of government. Oh yes. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And then I heard the Lord continue and turn to the apostles and say you will be delivered up to councils and you will be persecuted and you will be betrayed by mothers and fathers and you'll be hated for all by all nations for my name's sake and many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall kill one another many false prophets shall arise and deceive many and then I heard the Lord sing and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold what is he talking about iniquity means lawlessness because there's so much lawlessness folk won't love one another it's going to wax cold that's why you see shootings on the job shootings in the streets shootings in the home that's why you can see a mother take a baby throw it in a garbage can that's why you can see a father murder his children the love of many shall wax cold lawlessness in our city police officers because they're so on edge they'll shoot first ask questions later the old saying I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6 brothers and sisters that's the age we are in false prophets false scandals at the scandal this preaching doing this that preaching doing that until the point to where folk are not having the confidence in church no more and then there's our own problems in our own family children raised up in church feel the need to walk away and no longer walk with God marriages after decades falling apart cats and up on the rise death by car accident death by train death by driving death by flying all these days are the beginning of sorrows but I got some good news Jesus didn't leave us hanging he gave us a word of encouragement he said to endure the hard times if you hang in there and keep on praying if you stay on your knees and don't give up when the end comes
if you endure to the end, you will win. As bad as Jesus said it would be, he says that's still a way out. You just got to outlast the trouble. Because trouble don't last always. We got to endure, saints. I hear all the time about preachers falling. I hear all the time about bishops falling. <laughs> Don't be out and call some names. You'd be surprised. <laughs> all the time. Folk that we done held in high regard for years. Like the scripture says, dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savior. So doth a little folly to him that is in for reputation and honor. It only takes a little folly to bring you down. And I refuse to be brought down. I'm going to endure to the end. And the biggest enemy is not your brother and your sister. Look in the mirror. Can we say amen? You look at the enemy all the time. The biggest enemy. Yeah. It ain't the white man. I worked in the prison for 26 years. There was not one black man that didn't blame the white man for something. I said, what in the white man's house you broke into? It wasn't the white man you shot. I'm glad the white man locked you up, keep protect you from me. Blame everybody but yes, themselves. Right. I've learned if you can conquer yourself, there ain't nothing you can't do. Right. Yeah. You get your own self under control. Because you know you. Yeah. Yes, sir. You say amen. Yeah. You know how you are. Yeah. The devil knows how we are too. He knows how to send somebody to say the right thing. And there we go. What's the first thing we say? No, he didn't. I want to walk up behind you and say, yes, he did. What you going to do about it? I'm going to endure. In the end. Let them lie on you. They lied on Jesus. They're supposed to lie on you. Can we say amen? You're supposed to have some folk don't like you. Everybody like you? Everybody? Jesus said, woe well, to you when all men speak well. The gay guy, oh, I just love him. He, he, he. I'm about to look at you now. If they did it to Jesus, we are no better. As I close, brothers and sisters, as I close, I did the best I could. What I'm trying to tell you is this. Regardless of what hardships and struggles we encounter, uh -huh. the Lord has brought us to this point. Right. Yes. And if he has brought us to this point, yes. he can take us all the way. Yes. He didn't say, he that prays me till the end shall be saved. All right. The Bible says that everything that have breath, what? Anything with breath can praise the Lord. That's right. That's right. But everybody that has breath can't endure until the end. That's right. When your mind is made up, then you can shout because you know that your mind is made up. Now I'm not opposed to shouting. I just think that some folks shouldn't be shouting. Y'all be crying. The Bible says let your laughter turn to what? Morning. You can't shout off everything, is that right? right. Ain't nothing wrong with shouting now. I can't shout. I can holler. I can make a noise that the Lord will inter interpret a joyful noise. But the question is, are we doing? Are we working on ourselves? Are we paying attention to ourselves? Are we watching somebody else? Are we so focused on what somebody did to us or what I'm doing to myself by focusing on what other folks are doing to me? See, what folk, other folk are doing to you 
If you're not careful, you'll be focused on that. And at the same time, you are doing something to yourself by watching them do something to you. But you need to be paying attention to yourself. Does that make sense? Sound like a riddle, didn't it? Because it's not about them. It's about me. Because I've taken a different attitude. See, people have done us wrong. Right? We'll do us wrong. But God didn't stop, did he? So what am I doing trying to stop? All right. Well. If God let him lie on you, maybe that's what you needed. Because he could have stopped him, couldn't he? But he didn't stop him. There's a reason why he didn't stop him. God could have healed our son and let him live, but there was a reason why he didn't. He told us he healed him, and then he took him. You know? We wanted him to heal him, he still did. But God healed him and took him. You see? See, we don't know what's best for us. Because we don't really know us. The heart is deceitful above all things, definitely wicked. Who can know it? He is the only one that can know it. And so I have to trust him as to what he's allowing me to go through. And at the same time, as I learn more about myself, work on myself to be better for him. Does that make sense? Praise the Lord. To endure to the end. If you have the Holy Ghost and been baptized in Jesus' name, you have what it takes right now to make it to the end. You have what it takes right now. If you are a member of this church, everything that you need is in this place. Because if that wasn't the case, you wouldn't be here. You'd be someplace else. Can we say amen? amen? You have what it takes. What you have, you have what it takes. That's the Holy Ghost. Right. All we have to do is allow the Holy Ghost to conform us into the image of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Endure our troubles. Yeah. And in the end, we win because we are getting up out of here. All right. I don't hear much about the rapture no more, but I'm talking about because I'm looking to it. Yeah. I'm looking for Jesus. Yeah. Somebody asked me, where do you see Greater Bethlehem Temple in five years? I said, in heaven. All right. I said, where you going to be in five years? Well, I'm going to be in. I said to myself, you ain't looking to go to heaven, then I'll be in. That's what I'm looking for. See, I'm going to say this and I close. Bishop Archie Eggleton in Jackson gave me my first concept of God when I was six years old. He was my first pastor. And I sat under him from six till I was 15. He was the one that gave me my first concept of God. I went and visited him a couple weeks ago because he's dying. Uh, and I went there and thanked him for preaching the gospel to me. Because he and he preached about the coming of the Lord when I was six years old. And I couldn't shake it. The fact that God was coming, the one that made all of this is coming. I was six years old listening to that. And I could never shake it. It followed me everywhere I went. Got the Holy Ghost. He baptized me in Jesus' name at 12 years old. When three years later, I got the Holy Ghost. But it's always been always trace it back to that sermon he preached when I was <laughs> the Lord is coming and that's why I talk about it to this day that did something to me praise the Lord All right. you don't hear about it no more you know you hear about your season it's your season you know I don't know about you but every season is mine because every day with Jesus is what what, what other season are you talking about? <laughs> Say amen. I'm, I'm, in my, I'm always in my season. When I'm going through, I'm in my season. What other season are you looking for? I'm kind of strange, but well, am I? That's how I think. I ain't like one of these preachers that said, ah, I wanted to walk away, but I ain't never wanted to walk away. I don't know what that's all about. I ain't trying to put no fans on anybody that wanted to walk away. I'm just talking about me. <laughs> you say, man. Yeah, all right, man. I ain't looking for no other season. I'm in the season I'm supposed to be in. And I'm in this season till Jesus comes and takes me out of here. Because there ain't nothing better than what we got. And that's the Holy Ghost. If you can't be satisfied with that, shame on you. Because that is the best thing coming out of heaven. Say amen.
Well, all right, I'll talk to you long enough. And see, when I get tired, I just ramble on. Don't tell I'm tired. No. So, if you have not been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, you need something that's going to carry you through these times. These are some hard times. Some difficult times. Life is not easy. But Jesus, with Jesus, life is more abundantly with him. All you have to do is repent and go down and water in the name of Jesus. That's taking on his name. The blood is in that name. He's washing all your sins away. Then he gives you some power to obey this. The Holy Ghost. And when you get it, you will speak. And other, you don't have to try to do it. It happens automatically. I wish I had some witnesses in the house all the night. All you need to do is open up your mouth and receive. He'll come on in. Because you're going to need some help to deal with life. Because the devil is pouring it out on whoever he can. Yeah. Right, Brother Cedric, that was seconds from being killed in a car accident. Yeah. Yeah. Seconds. Yeah. He decided the last second not to go to another lane. Right. And a service truck came and smashed right into two vehicles right. and killed two people. Yeah. And our condolences and not just to those families, but God spared his life. Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't spare the life of the other two. And the Lord gave me a scripture out of Isaiah chapter 43. He says, because thou wast precious in my sight. And I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men and people for thy life. God allowed those to die so that he can live because he was precious in God's sight. That's in your Bible. Yeah. But you know God allows some folk to die just to keep you alive? Praise the Lord. That's why some of us are alive right now. We all know somebody that was better than us that are in the grave. I know. But look at you sitting up in here. Waving in your hand. Giving God the glory. It means something to be saved. It means something. We're not faking over here. We don't have to. If you got the real thing, you ain't got to pretend. Say amen. See, folk pretend because they don't have the real thing, but when you got it, you got it. Isn't that right? See, my wife don't have to pretend she's married. She better not. She ain't got a fake. She knows she got the best man walking on two feet. I said two feet because Jesus, don't, he's up there. Let me say amen. Praise the Lord. My mother and father were married 11 times. They weren't married to each other when they died. They were against our marriage. Called my wife a Jezebel. Isn't that something? It was all against it. And this December, we would have been married longer than all of their 11 combined. 36 years. I brag about that. Helps me remember how long I've been married. See, husbands, you want to impress your wife, throw out how long you've been married. Can we say amen? Now, I'm not giving you all my secrets, that's just one of them. Somebody, come on for prayer. Come on for prayer. Come on for prayer. Prayer won't hurt you. Prayer ain't never hurt anybody. Come for prayer. How can somebody talking to God for you hurt you? Everybody can use some prayer. Sometime, can we say that? Come on, somebody. 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 Come on. Where's that man? Where's that woman? That boy, that girl. The Lord is calling you. Family and friends day. of the saints here. God is calling you, calling you down, calling you for salvation, calling you for blessings. You don't have to live the way that you live. 
Apostolic Church.